In Cincinnati, almost half of the Sisters of Charity volunteered as Army nurses. There's a little confusion about the exact number because of inconsistencies between the War Department's records and the community's archives, but it was at least 42 sisters. Often called Black Cap Sisters, to distinguish them from the Daughters of Charity and other sisters who wore white cornets or wimples, the Sisters of Charity served in permanent and temporary hospitals, in military camps, on battlefields, and on board horse-drawn ambulances and medical riverboats. Some served on the Eastern Front in Ohio, Virginia, and Maryland. Others went to the Western Front in Kentucky, Tennessee, and Mississippi. Still others went to hospitals in Washington, D.C., or stayed in Cincinnati to work in the community's own St. John Hospital. Here I witnessed the most appalling sights. Men wanting arms, legs, or both. Pale, haggard faces, worn out with fasting and marching. Many, I think, died of broken hearts. Faces and voices haunt me, calling for home and dear ones whom they were destined never again to behold on earth. We took up our abode in a small wooden church, using the pulpit for a storeroom, boards for a table, suffering many inconveniences, and what I call our military career. We constantly visited the hospitals, doing all in our power for the poor sufferers. Our particular dress was a source of amusement to those who had never before seen a sister of charity, or a sister of any other order. We were frequently asked why we dressed so different than the other ladies. Oh, with how much ignorance did we not meet. Little tots in Catholic schools could have enlightened many of the grown-up men I have waited upon in our military hospitals. It is a very damaging position for anyone to take in a vow, but in the honest discharge of my duties, though a Protestant myself, I do not hesitate to declare that in my opinion the sisters are far preferable to the army nurses. They are better disciplined, more discreet, more judicious, and more reliable. Working in the hospitals may have been daunting, demanding, and challenging, but it was easy compared with what the sisters faced on the battlefields. The battlefield of Shiloh presented the most frightful and disgusting sights that it was ever my lot to witness. What we endured on the field of battle whilst gathering up the wounded from among the dead is simply beyond description. Wounded. Wounded everywhere. I would pick my steps among the wounded bodies to follow the doctor, dressing the wounds of those brave boys. Many of these men were young and beautiful and had left their dear mothers only to die in pain and anguish, and often all alone. It was heartrending to see those young fellows die hourly, often from fright, being too young to bear the hardships of a soldier's life, or to withstand the scenes of battle. We cared for Unionists and Confederates alike. We knew no difference, made no difference. Much, very much might be said of our work at Richmond, but God alone could tell the story. The ground was covered with wounded, dying, and dead bodies. Some of the dead bodies were only partially covered, hands and feet protruding. The weather being bad added not a little to this scene of action. Finally, after four long years, the war came to an end and the Sisters of Charity were able to return to Cincinnati and resume a more normal community life of prayer and service. Today in Cincinnati, 42 graves in the cemetery at Mount St. Joseph have distinctive U.S. Army nurse headstones. And each year, on Memorial Day, they are festooned with the bright colors of American flags, patriotic ribbons, and floral tributes. <laughs>